The WNBA officials have to do a better job on their interpretation of a hard foul, common foul, or a flagrant foul. Because what I've seen tonight from Caitlin Clark on Jordan Canada, it should have went to review for possibility of a flagrant foul or a flagrant foul penalty too in an automatic ejection. But before we get off in today's podcast, tell a friend to tell a friend. Well, tonight, the Indiana Fever took on the Atlanta Dream, man. And like I said the other day, I expected the Indiana Fever to pull this out and beat the Atlanta Dream, and that's what happened. But in this game, I saw something that was egregious and was never went to review to look to see if it was a possible flagrant foul or a flagrant foul penalty to automatic ejection. The refs let Caitlin Clark get away with murder. The play that I saw, it was egregious. She fouled Jordan Canada upside the head, and they gave her the and one, but they never went to review the play. To me, the play was similar to the situation where everybody got their panties in a bunch when Angel Reese hit Caitlin Clark from behind when she went to make a play on the ball, and she accidentally swiped her upside the head, but everybody cried wolf. Everybody wanted Angel Reese suspended. Everybody thought that Angel Reese did that intentionally. Everybody thought that that was another message that they're hating on Caitlin Clark. But the WNBA has to do better because what I've seen tonight, it fit the criteria of a flagrant foul, possibly a flagrant two, and possibly a suspension. But the referee never went to the scores table to review the play. Now, tonight's game... It was another good game by the Indiana Fever. They put together a great team win. Um, they balled um, Kate, Katie Samuelson, but she has zero points tonight. But Melissa Smith, she has 7.6 rebounds. Aaliyah Boston did her thing. She had a double-double. She had 14 points, 11 rebounds. Um, Kelsey Mitchell, once again, the best player on the Indiana Fever. She was 10 of 23, 3 of 10 from three-point line. Six of six from the free throw line. Also, she had seven rebounds, one assist, 29 big points to hold off the Atlanta dream. Now, Caitlin Clark, she had probably one of her better efficient games from the turnover standpoint. She only had two turnovers. And like I said, I'd love to see her get them turnovers down. She got the turnovers down. She had 19 points, two turnovers, seven rebounds, seven assists, Two steals, four and nine from three point range, three or three from the foul line, six to 14 from the field. But once again, Kelsey Mitchell keeps proving that she's Indiana's go to player and their best scorer and their best player on the team. But this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to show y'all a play that happened in the Indiana Fever game in the Atlanta Dream. And The girl stole the ball from Kelsey. Jordan Canada stole the ball from Kelsey Mitchell at the top of the key. Was going on a fast break, and Caitlin Clark trailed the play, and Caitlin Clark comes from behind and swipes her in the head, up side the head. And you can say what you want to say. Well, she was making an attempt to play on the ball regardless of that, but she came down, she swiped down, and the ref just gave Jordan Canada – The and one never went to the replay booth, never to see if it fit the criteria of a flagrant foul or anything. But the media is going to sweep it under the rug. All these YouTube content creators that talk about Caitlin Clark when she was getting fouled and producing all these videos and producing all this content. Where are you at now when Caitlin Clark does something similar to what you guys been crying about? But we won't see y'all talking about that. I see all these post-game reactions to the win, but y'all don't say nothing about the hard foul that um, Caitlin Clark gave Jordan Canada. So we're going to take a look at the clip on the play, and you guys let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think this should have been reviewed for possibly a flagrant foul, 
upgraded to a flagrant foul penalty to automatic ejection. And you know, on stuff like that, you can get suspended. So I want to see the media outlets. I want to see who's going to say something. I want to see if ESPN is going to talk about it first thing tomorrow morning. I want to see if Fox is going to talk about it. I want to see if these major networks are going to stand on business and say, Caitlin Clark deserves to be suspended one game for the flagrant foul, which they didn't call. So guys, take a look at this clip and y'all let me know. Come on now. And all she got was an and one. That's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying. See, they doing everything possible to protect Caitlin Clark and to get her the respect that she deserves by this bullshit that we just saw. But when others do it, it's a big problem. The media goes crazy. Where you at, Shannon Sharp? Where you at, Stephen A? Where y'all at? I don't hear y'all saying nothing. Y'all should have went straight to Twitter X for immediate reaction to this Bush League play by Caitlin Clark. But they don't want to talk about it. They want to sweep it under the rug. Man, we here, we just calling a spade a spade. We got to be fair across the board. For everybody that came in the comment section talking about Kennedy Carter, you know, Rough House Tactics on Caitlin Clark. I want to see what kind of comments y'all going to post now because of the fact that this don't fit y'all's narrative. This goes against y'all's narrative that, you know, Caitlin Clark did no wrong. But the play shows exactly what happened, similar to what Angel Reese did to Caitlin Clark, and everybody got up in an uproar. Everybody got up in an uproar because of what Kennedy Carter did to Caitlin Clark. That's that's the stuff that I'm talking about. We got to be fair across the board. So now I want to see everybody get in an uproar and see what they're going to say about the foul that Caitlin Clark did on Jordan Canada. We won't hear nothing like that. This won't even get talked about. This is going to get swept under the rug because Indiana Fever won tonight's game against the Atlanta Dream and they got 14 victories. That's what the talk is going to be about. It's going to be the talk's going to be about the Indiana Fever holding down that seventh playoff spot, potentially moving up to six. That's what the talk is going to be about. But they're not going to talk about this hard foul that everybody's seen on national television, on NBA TV, because it was nationally televised. But don't nobody want to talk about it. They want to sweep it under the rug. But I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to expose and exploit some of these YouTube content creators that always want to cry foul. But when Caitlyn does it, it's no big deal. Just like earlier in the year when old girl was all up on her skin and Caitlyn pushed her away, oh, it was no big deal. Uh, they thought that was so funny. They thought that she should have did that because the girl was playing her too tough. But now an egregious foul like this, we everybody saw with their own eyes on NBA TV, and it just gets swept under the rug like nothing happened. It's just a play on, go to the foul line, shoot your free throw, and get back down court. That was in the midst of the Atlanta Dream cutting that you know, double-digit lead to single digits, and this happens. But things could have really took off for the Atlanta Dream if they would have went to the scores table to review this type of play because now – you shoot the free throw, you score that. If it's upgraded to a flagrant foul, you get the technical foul shot. If it's upgraded to a flagrant two, possibly she gets kicked out of the game. But we won't want to talk about that. But I'm here to talk about it. So, hey, guys, you let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. I know y'all can come in the comment section and go crazy and say some outlandish things and say some delusional things. But we saw it with our own eyes. I put the proof out there. So you guys let me know how y'all feel about it. All the real ones know. So don't come in the comment section with, you know, this underhand stuff. I'm just I'm just calling a spade a spade and we keeping it real. And this is one time that everybody needs to keep it real. So this is going to wrap up another episode of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, KSAP. We're going to catch you on the next one. 
deuces. And remember, on your way out the door, before you put your shoes on, do me a favor. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you got your post notifications on so you never, every time Simply Ball drops and drops another hot bang. Thanks for listening to the Simply Ball Drop-In Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share on all major platforms. That's all, folks.